This April, to mark the upcoming release of the Avengers Infinity War, Jamboreeky.com will be hosting Marvel Month. That's right, I'm going to be posting written reviews of Marvel Cinematic Universe films on my official website, Jamboreeky.com. If you want to keep up to date with each review of Marvel Month, then make sure to subscribe to my official website, Jamboreeky.com. Howdy folks, Jamboreeky here, and welcome to Jamboreeky Orange, the show where I let my patrons decide what I review. The options for this month's poll included... Simbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Descendants 2. Tom and Jerry, The Magic Ring. The Avengers. The Secret Life of Pets. And The Illusionist. They chose The Avengers. In this film, a Norse god called Loki ends up in our world. He plans to use a powerful item called the Tesseract to bring an army of cybernetically enhanced aliens called the Chitauri to Earth in a bid to take over our planet. So S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury decides to gather a band of superheroes to protect Earth, but this project may not go to plan as the Avengers have teamwork issues. I'll confess that this film doesn't have a remarkable story. It's a formulaic, let's find the MacGuffin before a world-dominating, power-hungry villain uses it for evil. It's not anything special or original. But the story isn't the point of this film. It's more about setting up the Avengers team to let audiences know how this dynamic will work for more ambitious films planned for the future. What I like about this film is that most of the Avengers aren't friends right away. It'd be corny if they all automatically got along perfectly. Sure, some heroes gravitate towards each other out of common interest, but not everyone is willing to become pals. I mean, what are we, a team? No, 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 we're a chemical mixture that makes chaos. We're... we're a time bomb. You need to step away. Why shouldn't the guy let off a little steam? You know damn well why. Back off. Oh, I'm starting to want you to make me. These characters vary in culture, background, personality, sense of humor, intelligence, and experience. Egos are going to clash, and they do. Watching these contrasting heroes being pushed into sharing the same mission results in some engaging debates and humorous banter. They'll challenge each other's methods, poke fun at a particular hero's flaws, and even pick fights. It never becomes tiresome to me, though, because the script always finds hilarious humor or exciting tension in these arguments to keep audiences invested in the squabbling. Put on the suit. Let's go a few rounds. <laughs> You people are so petty and tiny. However, it's their shared moral compasses and concern for Earth's safety that unites them and forces these heroes to put aside their egos. After they realize that their bickering isn't helping and even giving an advantage to Loki, they decide to work together. In the finale, they get to show their newfound comradeship as they demonstrate camaraderie, teamwork, and what special skills they can bring as individuals. It's what makes the climax the strongest and most entertaining part of the film, showing comic book fans what they came to see and giving casual audiences an idea about what the Avengers can contribute to the cinema. I've noticed that many people don't like how quip-heavy and comedic this film gets. While I understand that fans want to see their favorite superheroes in a serious light to give them some grandeur and respectability, I personally prefer superhero films that aren't afraid to be self-aware and playful. And while I know that superhero films can pull off mature drama or a dark tone, as I've seen them do it before, I find myself enjoying the sillier superhero films more. It's why I love Adam West Batman more than Christopher Nolan's Batman. So I like that the Avengers has a tongue-in-cheek sense of humor, but that's just my personal taste. While the film does have a lot of comedy, it is fully capable of controlling its tone and shifting it in a different direction. For example, if a character is killed, the colors become muted, the atmosphere goes somber, and the acting is respectfully restrained. The comedy knows when to stop, and as far as I noticed, it never becomes tastelessly inappropriate. Anyway, what about the action in this movie? There really is a kinetic energy to the fight scenes in the film. Each hero displays a high level of skilled combat, but also showcases their own unique abilities. We can tell that they've heavily practiced their talents and powers because they exhibit extreme competence when they go into the battlefield. You know what? I've been discussing this film for a bit now, yet I've not even talked about the Avengers themselves. Pfft, silly me. 
Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, is a billionaire tech wizard who has built an advanced suit of armor for himself. Tony has this charismatic charm that helps him to steal every scene he's in. His quick wit and sick burns are a riot. Well, I promise this stress-free environment, no tension, no surprises. Ow! Hey! Nothing? Are you nuts? Sure, Sam. You really have got a lid on it, haven't you? What's your secret? Mellow jazz, bongo drums, huge bag of weed? Is everything a joke to you? Funny things are. Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, is a World War II super soldier who was frozen for many decades and unfrozen in our time. He carries a vibranium shield that he uses for both attack and defense, but his military experience also plays a part in his style of fighting. What I like about Steve is his stern, old-fashioned personality and how it clashes with the more abrasively hip Tony Stark. I like how Steve has this quaint naivety that makes him endearingly innocent, but isn't afraid to question the S.H.I.E.L.D. agency's motives behind the scenes, as loyal and patriotic as he may be. He's a man of his time, but is prepared to learn about our era and is open to criticizing those in charge. What is Phase 2? Phase two is S.H.I.E.L.D. uses the cube to make weapons. Sorry, the computer was moving a little slow for me. Rogers, we gathered everything related to the Tesseract. This does not mean I'm that we're I'm sorry, making... Nick. What, were you lying? I was wrong, Director. The world hasn't changed a bit. Dr. Bruce Banner is a mild-mannered nuclear physicist. He has a calm and gentle personality, making him a relaxing presence on screen. But there's a dark side to why he's so quiet and soft-spoken. If enraged, Banner will become the Incredible Hulk, a super strong, beastly man fueled by anger. Knowing this, Banner is fascinatingly engaging to watch, because we know he's a danger if triggered. This makes him one of the more complicated heroes, because he's technically a threat if he can't control the Hulk. At the same time, the Avengers are proud of the advantages he brings to the team, as he's the most physically strong member of the group. Thor is a Norse god who carries a powerful hammer, one that can summon lightning. Much like Steve Rogers, he has a naivety about modern Earth culture because he comes from the world of Asgard. I really admire his patriotic pride in being an Asgardian, but I love that he still retains compassion for those outside his world. Interestingly too, Thor happens to be Loki's adoptive brother, which makes Loki's position as antagonist very personal, as one of our heroes has a soft spot for the villain of the movie. Loki is beyond reason, but he is of Asgard, and he is my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. He's adopted. Black Widow is a Russian agent who is devoted to S.H.I.E.L.D., but ends up becoming a member of the Avengers. She's a slick fighter whose combat style is aggressively tough, while also being impressively agile. What I like the most about her, though, is her ability to manipulate villains into giving away their plans by playing them at their own game, and I find that level of intelligent performance very cool. You're a monster. <laughs> oh, no. You brought the monster. So, Banner. That's your play. Hawkeye is the least defined Avenger, but to be fair, that's because he spends most of the movie under Loki's mind control. Sure, he's pretty awesome with a bow and arrow, plus I do believe the anger he feels after waking up from Loki's spell, but he's just not given enough screen time to be developed as a hero. However, the Avengers are not alone. By their side, they have support from the S.H.I.E.L.D. agency. Two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents in particular get the most screen time. Maria Hill, a by-the-book serious-minded agent who serves as a second-in-command to Nick Fury. And Phil Coulson, a nerdy agent who has an affectionate fanboy love for Captain America, but also exhibits a sense of bravery when confronting Loki after he escapes S.H.I.E.L.D.'s prison. I do love how these two contrast against each other. They're like complete opposites, which shows that S.H.I.E.L.D. has a variety of personalities working for it. I gotta say, it's an honor to meet you, officially. I sort of met you, I mean, I watched you while you were sleeping. I mean, I was, I was present while you were unconscious from the ice. You know, it's really, it's just a, just a huge honor to have you on board. It's, Nick Fury heads the S.H.I.E.L.D. agency. Sure, he's a badass when armed with any kind of weapon, but there's more to him than that. 
His passion for protecting Earth is what makes him take risks and defy the doubts held by his bosses. He is aware of the potential consequences of setting up the Avengers, but also knows that Earth has been pushed to desperate measures. However, he's not an idol of perfection. The man is realistically flawed. From his emotionally manipulative tactics to motivate the Avengers, to how he keeps secrets from everyone around him. But what's a superhero film without its supervillain? How does Loki hold up? Loki is far from a fretting antagonist because he's so campy and quite the diva, but that doesn't bother me because I love these kinds of bad guys. He's never boring or annoying, remaining consistently entertaining as a flamboyant god with a magic spear. Tom Hiddleston plays him with a balance of cartoony hamminess and Shakespearean elegance, making him delightfully fun to watch. I can't help but giggle when he pulls a cheeky evil smile. <laughs> Enough! You are all of you beneath me. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. God. To conclude, the Avengers may not be groundbreaking in terms of storytelling, but it really is a fun blockbuster film with so much enthusiasm, passion and energy behind it. I will admit that as someone who hasn't seen the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe lineup, there were certain callbacks and references that went over my head. Don't get me wrong, I got the gist of what was happening in this film, but there was just certain things missing as someone who hadn't seen films like Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, and so forth. I've been Jambariki, and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. So, what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Jambariki Orange? Well, that's entirely up to my patrons. The options for next month's poll include... Rogue One, A Star Wars Story Enchanted The Page Master X-Men Finding Nemo and Tom and Jerry the movie. Oh, those options sound cool, don't they? Now, don't forget that you have to be a patron in order to access this poll. What is a patron? Don't worry, I'll explain. This is my Patreon. It's a site for my fans to make monthly donations to me. Those who donate are called patrons. The money I receive goes towards funding my videos and serves as a supportive income for me. Patrons can donate as much as they want each month and stop donating any time. All donations are greatly appreciated, and in return for their patronage, patrons are given exciting rewards, depending on how much they donate, including their names credited in my main show, access to exclusive videos, and the chance to decide a review on my channel. Very excited to find out which film my patrons want me to do next month. Cheerio, folks. <laughs>